I'm George Grunberger and I am chairman of the Grunberger Diabetes Institute in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. But here at the annual meeting of ACE, I happen to be the treasurer of the organization. And I'm here to tell you one of the most exciting things which happened in this annual meeting. It's the unveiling of the new ACE algorithm for managing patients with type 2 diabetes. And the question is, why do we need a new one? There are a couple of reasons. Number one, what we tried to do for the first time is a very comprehensive algorithm that includes everything from pre-diabetes and obesity management through the glycemia, but also includes control of cardiovascular disease risk factors. So let me just start with glycemia. Why do we need another algorithm for managing people with type 2 diabetes? As you know, ACE has done this several times before. There are a couple of reasons. Number one, the class of or classes of drugs for type 2 diabetes are ever-growing. We have now a plethora of drugs. We have embarrassment of riches, as they say. And it gets to be very confusing for many people out in the real world trying to manage patients with type 2 diabetes. How do you sort it out? What do you use? When do you use it? And what we try to do is to be a little bit more, I guess, prescriptive than in the past. Not only list all the drugs which are approved by the FDA to use to lower blood sugar, inpatient type 2 diabetes, but also try to help people who have to make those decisions. So what has not changed is that we start still looking at the A1C. Most clinicians will see the patient and will know what the A1C is. So we still maintain sort of the three groupings, patients who present to the practitioner with A1C under 7.5%, patients who will be between 7.5 and 9%, and the patients who are sort of uncontrolled over 9% because the approaches will be different. And we list not only the drugs which are approved as monotherapy for those patients with the A1C less than 7.5%, uh, but we try also to do it multidimensional. There is a, you notice on the new algorithm, there's actually length of the bar. So the drug uh, is represented by the length of the horizontal bar, and the longer the bar, the more strongly the group felt that the drug would be indicated. The shorter the bar, probably less of a preference. The other thing is you have employees' color scheme. So the green is good as if you start looking at these safety issues, and the yellow means there's some caution. So we tried to do a couple of things, not, not just listed drugs, but how they would stack in order of preference, and also as far as the safety, because in the end, the whole idea is to manage patients to whatever the target value is as safely as possible. And if you sort of look beyond that, then patients in the middle group need to start typically on a combination of drugs with complementary mechanism of action. There are patients, obviously, who fail, and if after three months you don't reach the target, you move on, you keep adding drugs, and of course the ones which present with A1C over 9%, uh, if they have symptoms, they usually get started on insulin. We also included the next page in the algorithm, uh, a more detail scheme, how does one initiate and intensify insulin and again try to provide more help for people who might not be as familiar with either basal insulin titration and then eventually with the addition of bolus insulins to your uh, basal insulin. You also are trying to get into the uh, combination of basal insulin and incretins, for example, in many patients with type 2 diabetes. So it's comprehensive, hopefully it's legible. Hopefully it makes sense. And again, this stepwise uh, addition of the agents in order of preference, hopefully will make it easier for patients to be managed. And we also included another page, which was very successful last time around, that we tried to look at the safety uh, of all the drugs, because we have now a dozen or so classes of drugs for type 2 diabetes. And again, one has to make a decision in the setting of the patient's uh, risk factors, in the setting of uh, complications that people who might have congestive heart failure or kidney disease. We have to deal with uh, issues with hypoglycemia or weight gain. And so again, uh, the page in the algorithm look, which looks at that tries to sort it out and again with the color scheme try to basically tell the practitioner which drugs would be relatively safer and for which drugs one has to use more caution. As far as the rest of the algorithm, we also try to do for the first time a little bit more. That is, we try to delve into issues of pre-diabetes, 
and how does one manage prediabetes? We're looking at two issues. One is looking at the cardiovascular risk factors in these patients who are high risk to begin with, and also look at the disc glycemia in these patients. And then the other thing we included, again, for the first time, is the whole obesity algorithm and this correlation now between uh, obesity, cardiovascular risk management, and glycemia to try to give the practitioner sort of a deeper look at how one would approach these patients because they don't come to us just with, with, just with one problem. And so, again, when these patients come, they already are dyslipidemic and hypertensive and overweight or obese. And in addition to you know, elevated high sugar, how does one approach it? And so we hope that with this algorithm, hopefully we'll be able to help practitioners out there uh, to understand how to manage these patients comprehensively to hopefully reduce all the complications of type 2 diabetes. Mm -hmm.